I think I'm gonna have to go 50-50 here. I don't think I can actually overwater this thing. <laughs> Hi, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American living in Germany. I mainly do exotic and rare whiskeys, and today's not an exception. Today I have St. George, two-year-old, batch one, that boutique rye company. It's a rye spirit. So, 1982. Look at the bottles. Every single that boutique um Bottling has a specially designed label, and this label is actually a story. Then in 1982, Time Magazine awarded the person of the year to a, not a woman, to a computer. And in the exact same year, 1982, a German, Jörg Rumpf, had a still in the San Francisco Bay Area and started his company, St. George Craft Distilling. 1982. He should have, be, should have been awarded the man of the year, or at least it still should have been. So, Jörg Rumpf was a lawyer. I'm sorry, no, he's a judge that came over from Germany to America, and he started doing what all people do, or most families do down in the Black Forest in the southern part of Germany. They started distilling their own Opsla. The word Opsla in German is often translated in English into something called eau de vie, which is French, which means water of life. And in English, we just call it brandy. So these are things, usually above 35% alcohol, ABV. You just take some type of fruit. It could be a pear. It could be an apple. It could be a plum. It could be a cherry. It could be anything. And you just make a juice out of it, distill it, and it's clear. And then you sell it. I have some very interesting Opsla, some very interesting eau de vie in my cabinet downstairs. One was bought in Austria, and it tastes like turpentine. Another one was given to me by a friend down in the area around Stuttgart by, um, in southern Germany, and it tastes like liquid honey. <laughs> so there's also Terrible, terrible differences in the quality of these products. Now, your Grumpf actually um, took one of his eau de vie and sent it back to a competition in the old country, back in Germany, and it won. <laughs> so this um, American-made Opsla beat the traditional German and European-made, which was really, really a famous and um, very embarrassing thing. Now, um, 1996, Lance Winters joined up with Jörg Rumpf, and they actually started producing single malt whiskey. Now, Lance Winters was a nuclear physicist and hobby distiller, and um, they actually introduced 2000, their first single malt whiskey, onto the American market, onto, onto the uh, U.S. market. Now, they were not the first... In the North American market, that um, privilege goes to the, the Glen Breton Distillery in Nova Scotia. They actually um, made 1990 the first single malt whiskey of North America. So what we have here is um, Masters of the Malt is a company in England. They produce, they have an online shop. They produce their own um, special, specialty bottlings that boutique, and they also have drinks by the dram. And so this is a subsidiary of Masters of Malt, which bought from the other distillery, that boutique, a bottle. There were only 400 bottles worldwide of this. And they filled up these little tiny samples that I bought and went the lot and let them ship it to Germany. 55%. So this is basically um, barrel proof, or as we say um, in Europe, cask strength. So, two years old, not bad, and this is the first batch. What does my nose say? My nose says there's a lot of alcohol in there. <laughs> my nose says there's a little bit of rye and a lot of corn. It says rye spirit, which means basically, according to the rye laws of America, 51% of rye. But it can be up to another 48% or theoretically 49% of 
corn. Now, usually we need between 3 and 5% of barley to get the enzymes in there to get the fermentation process starting. But I think it has, um, I would consider this, first of all, a very high rye bourbon more than I would say it smells like a rye whiskey. Now, I also had a little bit of that um, corn on the cob, on the grill type of thing, almost a little bit burnt. I get brown sugar, a lot of brown sugar, by the way. Like glaze, imagine you glazed your corn on the cob on the grill with a brown sugar type of buttery thing. That's what I'm getting. <sighs> Alcohol, sugar, corn, brown sugar, and a little bit of rye. So now I have a big, big, big problem. I know this is going to be too much. Still, I'm going to nip at it, and then I'm going to put some water in there, and then I'm going to put even more water in there, because I have a feeling that I will need it. Wow. Alcohol, bitter, really bitter. And a little bit of this corn on the cob burnt on the grill taste. Not what I wanted in my mouth at the beginning. So, one. So I just put eight drops in here, which should get it down to about 48%. These are all Guesstimates, all right? About 48%. Now my nose says... That it was still above 50%. <laughs> That's what my nose said. Ah, getting better, getting better. It's still hot. But a little bit more of the wood is coming through. A little bit of more of the brown sugar and molasses is coming through but there's hardly any rye that really just jumps out at you and says, here, here I am. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but I love rye. I did a rye whiskey challenge. I tasted 24 different rye whiskeys in four different brackets of six, six each. Two best advanced, so I had eight in the final. And um, Willet actually won. Um, Willet Family Reserve, um, eight-year-old won. And number two was... Um, Jack Daniel Rye, which really amazed me. And number three was um, Lot 40. And number four was the um, Smooth Ambler Scout Rye, seven years old. If you can buy this, this is very, very good stuff. Almost everywhere in the States is available. Um, that would beat it every day. This what I have in my, my, my glass. But it's getting more towards the um, Smooth Ambler now. There's a very dark rye in there. There's a very light rye that has a little bit more of a, um, a citrus type. And a dark rye is more of the um, ukule uh, ukulele, eucalyptus and menthol. It's fairly pleasant on the nose now, but it needed a lot of water. I put in 10 drops in this little bit here, so I'm almost like a third water now. It's still hot. Wow. 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 <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go 50-50 here. I don't think I can actually overwater this thing. <laughs> um, 65 euros over here. 400 bottles available worldwide. I'm sure that if that boutique has the feeling that this is a hit... And also that the quality of St. George actually matches their expectations. They might actually do a batch two. Heaven Hill already has a batch two, maybe even a batch three from that boutique. And these are just cast strength. Um, they buy two, maybe three different barrels. Depends on the size of the barrels. They just make one um, filling and that's it. When they're gone, they're gone. And each and every time there's a new label. So that boutique is a very, very specialized artis artisan um, type of filling, a type of bottling, and it's a very very unique thing. All right, so this is, as I said, about 50-50 water. Now we're getting there. Mmm, oh, now I have really a lot of good stuff in there. You get some clove, 
I'm gonna even go for ginger, um, um, sweet wood. Um, there is this this tea with the roots, um, sweet root. I don't know what it was. Oh, that's good. Um, what what did, uh, like root beer even a little bit? Yeah. Mmm. Oh wow. So you can put double the water in there. <laughs> it's fifty fifty the water, and you really get something. My recommendation, that boutique, buy exactly the same amount of barrels you bought before, wait another entire year, fill it up again for batch two. Then wait another year and fill it up for batch three with four years old. I think that's going to be the sweet spot. I think there's going to be the perfect amount of wood. I think there's going to be enough of that edge of the alcohol gone that this stuff is going to be fantastic. It has it promises a lot, um, especially if I do this. So I put a little bit of this in here. I'm sure all my whiskey connoisseurs out there are just going, Jason, whiskey Jason, what are you doing? I put the same amount, or even a little bit more of water in there. Mmm, mmm. The nuances finally come out. Oh, that's good. There's even a little bit more water. The alcohol is totally gone. The sweetness is still a little bit there. But then we really do have the eucalyptus. We have the root beer. We have the, cl the clove. Um, oh, good stuff. Really good stuff. But that alcohol just powers on through there and just ruins everything else. So, Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of American. I'm just going to give this a 3 minus because it tried and really wasn't what it should have been. Now, 65 euros for a 500 milliliter bottle, that's going to be a 4 minus in my book for the value for money. But, I think, if we waited another 2 years, double the price, put up the 149, and then tasted it, I might actually give it a 2, or 2 plus for the taste. And I might even go to a 3 for the price of value for money. Who knows? I'm looking forward to see what um, that boutique does and what St. George also does. Great stuff. By the way, I did a video in German, video number 127 on my channel, Whiskey aus der Sicht eines Amerikaners. Um, they actually had a, uh, something called Breaking and Entering, where the guys from St. George went over to Kentucky, bought a few barrels, brought it back, bottled it up in California, and then sold it. Also a very interesting concept. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and please tell your friends about this weird guy in, a, in Germany is doing videos about rare and exotic whiskeys. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye.